Staying with Syria, a Kurdish woman is helping lead the offensive on Raqqa. Roj Dafelat is a joint commander in an offensive by Syrian rebels and Kurdish forces. She's been fighting the extremist group for the last three years. Felat, who is in her 30s, is heading the Syrian Democratic Forces, which is made up of some 15,000 Kurdish and Arab fighters and backed by the U.S.-led coalition. And with us now is Mr. Tsul Shazaf, a travel author and journalist who spent time in northern Iraq and on ISIS front lines. Thank you very much for being with us. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Shazaf, I want to focus with you a bit about this woman and the female fighters with the YPG on the Kurdish side who are helping battle the Islamic State. It's been pub publicly known for a little while now that Islamic State fighters are actually afraid of women fighters. Yes, they are. I mean, this is something that they think, according to their belief, that uh, if they are being killed by a woman fighter, then they do not get to heaven. Uh, therefore, for them, it's nothing good to be killed by a woman. And uh, the thing of uh, the Kurdish ladies, uh, Kurdish women, that they participate in the fighting, and a lot of them are commanders and commanders of men also, is nothing new. This is something that was actually originated uh, by the PKK, which is what the Kurdish call the guerrilla. And this is the, the, actually the organization that works in Turkey, in Syria, in Iraq, and in Iran. And they have sort of socialistic, humanistic terms and equalness between men and women. And they influenced a lot and helped organize the, the groups of the YPG, of YPG, in northern Syria, which this commander is with them. And therefore, she's leading it. So how big of a role are they playing in the fight against the Islamic State? And specifically in this case, you say that this does date back. Should they play a larger role since it's widely known that they are afraid of women fighters? Well, I think that if you take the proportions between men and women, especially in uh, northern Syria, in what is called Rojava, which is actually the free de facto region of the Kurds in, in northern Syria, I think the estimates that I've heard are between 30 to 40 percent of the fighting force. So they fight a lot. And I met during traveling in uh, northern Syria, in uh, Rojava, I met a lot of the groups uh, and also mixed groups of uh, um, girls and boys or men and women fighting. So there is no discretion between the, the two and they're both fighting and fighting very well. And from the coalition standpoint, you're saying that this is something that's been going on for in the YPG and Kurds specifically, but she's also leading, uh, she's leading Arabs and other ethnic groups as well. How big of a deal is it that a woman is leading this coalition? Well, usually when there are Arab fighters, that will be the Arab women will fight with the Kurdish uh, women. They will not, usually they will not be in sort of a mixed uh, unit. It's a big thing for Arabs to fight under the courts because there are, there are tensions. And this is the thing that we've heard also about uh, Azaz and the area of Fifrin, where the courts, when they conquer an area of Arabs, usually they don't let them come back to their houses because they're afraid of them. There are a lot of tensions between Arabs and Kurds. While, again, while traveling in northern Syria, I've heard complaints from Kurds, listen, uh, the Muslims or the Sunni Muslims or the Arabs, they were brought to the, our areas by Assad in order to weaken us. And therefore, today, there's a lot of bad blood between Kurds and especially Sunni Arabs. And there is some kind of coordination between the Alawites of Assad and the Kurds. And this is something, again, that is not widely spoken. Mr. Shazaf, thank you very much for joining us this evening on a very interesting topic and one that isn't heard of very often.